In the previous modules, we have seen how to model simple programs and hardware circuits as transition systems. In this module, we will be considering slightly more complicated programs which manipulate data. Such programs are called data dependent programs. Essentially, the programs that we call data dependent programs consist of some variables. These variables could be of different types. Statements with conditional branching on these variables. For example, if x is bigger than 0, if y is 5 and so on. And statements consisting of assignments to variables like x goes to x minus 1, y is set to 5 and so on. The goal of this module is to model such data dependent programs. We will look at this concept through examples. In the next slide, we would be looking at the model of the vending machine which we had seen in module 1. Let us recall the transition system which represented the vending machine. The machine is initially in an idle state. When the user inserts a coin, the machine moves into a select state. In the select state, depending on which option is chosen by the user, the vending machine goes into either state W or state C. Once it is in state W, it remembers the fact that the user has selected water. Now it ejects a water bottle out and goes into the idle state. Clearly, the functioning of this vending machine depends on the number of water bottles and the number of cola cans currently available in the machine. These are the variables on which the vending machine depends on. Let n water be the current number of water bottles available. Let n cola be the current number of cola cans available. Let us assume that the maximum number of water bottles that can be present in the machine is max. Similarly, the maximum number of cola cans that it can keep is also max. These are the variables. How does the machine change these variables? Rather, how does the code representing this machine change these variables? Each time a water bottle is given out, the value of the variable is decremented by 1. So along this transition, n water becomes n water minus 1. This is an assignment. Similarly, when a cola can is given out, the effect of this transition is to reduce the value of n cola by 1. Note that from the select state, the machine can go to state W only if the number of water bottles currently available is bigger than 0. Similarly, from select it can go to C only if n cola is bigger than 0. So this is a condition on the transition. If both of them are 0, let us add this transition 
which returns the coin. So, n water bigger than 0, n cola bigger than 0, n water equal to 0 and n cola equal to 0. These are conditions on these transitions. n water is set to n water minus 1 n cola set to n cola minus 1 are assignments on these transitions. These are the effects of these transitions. To make it more interesting, let us also add this refill option. When the machine is in the idle state, from time to time it can do a refill. And what is the effect of this refill, the number of water bottles becomes equal to the max and number of cola cans becomes equal to the max. In addition to this diagram representing the working of the code, we also need to know the initial condition. Let us assume that initially the number of water bottles is max and the number of cola cans is max. This kind of a picture along with the initial condition is said to be a program graph. As you might have noticed, a program graph looks different from a transition system. A transition system can have only action names on its edges. In a program graph, in addition to the action name, there are conditions and assignments. Given the initial values of the variables, one can associate a transition system that represents the working of this program graph starting from these values of the variables. We will explain this taking the initial value of max to be equal to 1. Starting from the value of max to be 1, the program graph performs different executions. We want a transition system that represents these executions. We will now give this transition system. To give the transition system, we need to define its states and its transitions. Just to avoid confusion, let me call the states of the program graph as locations. Now, what are the states of the transition system that we are talking about? The states of the transition system would include the location of the program graph and the values of the variables, the current values of the variables. The red dot represents the fact that the value of n water is 1. The number of red dots gives us the value of n water. The number of blue dots gives us the value of n cola. Initially, my program graph is in the idle location with n water and n cola being 1. Let us look at the transitions. When a coin is inserted, the program graph goes from idle to select. There are no changes to the variables in this transition. In the transition system, there is a transition from idle to select with no change to the variables. From select, there is a transition to W on water. This is possible provided the value of N water is bigger than 0. Look at this state. Since the value of n water is 1, this transition is possible. 
this transition does not change the values of the variables. So we go into the state with location w and n water equal to 1, n cola equal to 1. Similarly, from select, we can take the transition that asks for cola since n cola is bigger than 0. And as this transition does not change the variables, we go to state c with the same values for the variables. Let us get back to state w. When a water bottle is ejected, the value of n water becomes n water minus 1. This is this transition from w on get water going to idle. The effect of the transition is to reduce the value of n water by 1. So, in the transition system, we go from w to idle. However, we do not go to this idle state. We go to the idle state which has the value of n water to be 0. Similarly, from cola, this transition to idle will reduce the value of n cola by 1. So we go to a state where n water is unchanged. However, the value of n cola is reduced by 1. Note that from here, we do not go to this idle state or this idle state. We go to the idle state that reduces the current values of n cola by 1. Now, in this idle state, if a refill transition is taken, you get back to the idle location. However, with n water and n cola being set to max. Hence, in the transition system, no matter which idle state you take, if you take this refill transition, you go to the idle state which has n water and n cola being equal to 1. Similarly, we can finish the picture. This represents the transition system corresponding to this program graph with the initial value of max equal to 1. Let us now look at another example. Consider this program fragment manipulating a variable x. There is a while loop with a condition on x. If x is bigger than 0, the loop is entered. If x is even, its value is reduced by 2. If x is odd, its value is reduced by 1. And yet again, this condition is checked. Let us try to model this program fragment as a program graph. The locations of the program graph are as follows. The place where the value of x is checked before entering the while loop is location L1. The contents inside the while loop form location L2. The rest of the program below the while loop forms location L3. At L1, there are two transitions. If x is bigger than 0, the while loop is entered. Otherwise, the program jumps to L3. At L2, if x is even, the value of x is reduced by 2 and the control jumps back to L1. This is represented by this transition. Else, if x is odd, the value of x is reduced by 1 
and the control jumps back to L1. This is given by this transition. This is the program graph representing this simple while loop. To see the specific behavior of the program starting from a certain value of the variable, we can look at the transition system corresponding to the program graph and this starting value of the variable. For example, let us take the initial value of x to be equal to 3. The transition system with initial condition x equal to 3 is as follows. The program is initially in location L1 with x equal to 3. Since x is bigger than 0, this transition is taken. And the program goes to location L2 with the same value of the variable. At L2, since 3 is odd, this transition is taken. Hence, the next state would be L1 with x equal to 2. Once again, the while loop is entered. Since 2 is even, this transition is taken and hence the next state would be L1 with x equal to 0. Now, as x equal to 0, the program does not enter the while loop. Instead, it goes to L3. This brings us to the end of this module. In this module, we considered programs that manipulate variables. There are two notions that you need to understand. One, program graphs. These are representations of the control flow of the program. Two, transition systems of program graphs. These represent the behavior of the program on a certain initial valuation of the variables. If these two notions are clear, you are ready to jump to the next module.